Hello. <laughs> okay, hopefully this time everything will be clear. It's all good? If you can see me, hear me, let me know. Hello everyone and welcome to, what? It's another live stream virtual art studio. Can you believe it? Hey Austin, oh, so good to see you. Welcome back. Thanks for being patient with me, folks. I just had to lie, um, restart the live stream. Hello, Tiffany. Oh my goodness. It's like being back in the living room again with all these familiar friendly faces. It's so good to see you. It's so good to hear from you. I've got my cup of coffee here, so feel free to get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever nice cozy thing will help you through the afternoon of art making. Mm. I tell you, this was definitely a day where I really had to uh, convince myself to get out of my pajamas. I'll be honest with you. Hello, Wendy. Welcome back. Thanks for being patient with me, everyone. And as always, if always, let's see if I can speak properly as well. If you're new to this virtual art hive time, uh, I'm Mary. I'm from the Living Room Community Art Studio. We used to have a cool art hive space, like an actual space that everyone could come into and create and create in and connect with one another in. Uh, since the pandemic, we've had to shut that, but we are still here. We are still connecting. We are still creating. We are still spending time with one another in meaningful ways whenever we can. And this is one of the ways we do that. Oh, fantastic. Thanks for the feedback, everyone. And hello, Shelly, welcome. Shelly's asking, how am I doing? Well, I think that pajamas thing definitely says a lot. I really had to talk myself out of my pajamas. And I kind of found something that feels very similar to pajamas to wear today. Do you know what I mean? It's that kind of day. It's snowy and cold outside. It's one of those Wednesdays where I'm really feeling Wednesday. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> If anyone else out there can relate to that, please let me know. And you know what? Let me know what you're working on. Um, and it's just such a, yeah, it's a lovely thing to be back here. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. And hello, Timothy. Oh my good, Tim. Mary, how am I? Well, you know, I was just saying it's a pajama day for me. These aren't my pajamas, but I mean, they're really comfortable. They're as close as I can get to pajamas and still sort of being professional. <laughs> how are you folks doing though? That's the important question. How are you doing out there? What are you working on? How are you feeling today? Are you having a Wednesday, a Wednesday kind of day? I don't know. During these strange times, I experience different, uh, different moments of surprise. Things will feel awfully normal all of a sudden. And then one day I'll just suddenly remember, wait a second, this isn't normal. What am I doing? <laughs> And I have to just, you know, rewind a little bit and take care of myself. And I guess recalibrate is a way of describing it, right? Just recalibrate myself so I can move through the day with as much joy as possible, but as much wellness as possible too. And sometimes, sometimes that means taking a step back. And oh, lovely, Shelly's back in Oshawa, making it, yeah, making the best you can. Oh, well, it's always good to be here, Shelly says. And I feel the same way. And Courtney, hello, Courtney, missing you too. So that's a really, you know, I think we all might be feeling this a little more lately than we have been in the past. Tell you what, it's almost a year. It's almost a year, folks. And like, since the last time we've maybe seen one another in person, since the last time we were able to connect with one another in the space, <sighs> that takes its toll, right? But we are still here. So hello, Dan, Dan Walters saying recalibration is a great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah, recalibration. I think that's the only way I can describe it. Just those little kind of fine tuning adjustments we make every day. Sometimes we're not aware that we're making them. We're just so used to dealing with whatever comes our way. Sometimes I think it's good to, you know, give yourself a pat on the back and honor all the work that you're doing to get through these strange and uncertain times and to recognize, you know, just take a moment to recognize, to ask yourself, what do I need right now? What? Hey, bees, good to see you. Wow. Oh, this is, oh, folks, my heart is warm. My heart is very warm right now. Um, yeah, what is it that, what is it that you need? What is it that you might want a little bit more of in your life today to help readjust, to help feel grounded, to feel creative, to feel inspired? What do you need to remind yourself that, you know what, we're not alone during this. We're still together. 
Oh, Tim. Oh, lovely. Tim's saying I'm awesome. I'm having a Wednesday kind of day too. Good to know I'm not alone. Still staying positive and trying to be, yeah, trying to be on a good track. I'm really hoping the living room opens up again because you are awesome. Oh, Roth, you know, that's, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do miss talking to folks in person. I miss spontaneous conversations and just those wonderful life moments of kind of stumbling into beauty. And I know we can do that in online as well. And I know, you know, it's perhaps just about getting creative and asking ourselves, okay, okay, we can't go to the beauty, but how can we make space for that beauty in our lives? And when I say the word beauty, I don't just mean pretty. I think, hey, Emmett, I think, um, I don't know, what is those beautiful moments, those magical moments, what are they to you? And how, how can we make more room to uh, attract them into our own lives or to make space for them to occur in our own lives or to be, you know, have our eyes open wide enough that we can see them when they're around us. It's just about, I think, yeah, part of that recalibration process perhaps is letting ourselves be aware and notice those things. So yeah, for whatever that's worth, I think today part of my Wednesday recalibration is recognizing it's okay to make space for those things and it's okay to recalibrate too. So if you need it, and if that's what you need to use this time for, go for it. Gather your supplies, perhaps grab a project you haven't worked on in a little while, or perhaps something that you've been really looking forward to getting back to, and give yourself some time to focus on that. Oh, lovely. Nicole's saying, yep, you just nailed it. I miss spontaneity. Yep. <laughs> and we can still have it. It just looks a little different these days, but I, I think, we need to make room for spontaneity. This is going to sound strange, I think. Intentionally making space for spontaneity, which maybe is the opposite of spontaneity. I don't know, folks. I don't know. But let's see what we can do with that. And Annie saying, beauty feels more and more like a feeling too. Oh, Annie. Hello, Annie, by the way. Yeah, there's something... Uh, Beauty isn't just a thing, it's something more than that, isn't it? So let's see what we can do with that. Oh, lovely. There we go. And Shelly just saying, oh, that's lovely. Shelly's saying, if anyone needs to be individually welcomed, send Shelly a message and Shelly can do it for you there. So that's a lovely offering too of that one-on-one -on -one connection if you're needing a little bit of that today and maybe don't want to be make yourself uh, seen in the public chat that we have on this live stream. If you just need to touch base with someone, Shelly's offer that up for folks to do. How lovely is that, Shelly? Thank you. And Emmett saying, I'm watching you today with my friend while we do crafty art stuff. Excellent. Oh, well, thank you. And welcome friend. <laughs> well, let's, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do then. Let's get busy making stuff. How about that? And I'll still chat and do my thing. But if you're here, if you'd like to participate in the chat and say hello, share what you're working on, please feel free. If you have links or things uh, that you'd like to share in the chat posts as well, feel free to do that too. Shine a little light on what you're working on. Let's be proud of all the things that we're accomplishing these days. And if you just like to sit back, be quiet, listen to the conversations unfold, you're more than welcome to do that too. Just have some music on wherever you're at or just listen to us, do your laundry, do your homework, whatever feels right to you right now. That's okay. You do you. This is all about what you need to help you get through your day as crafty and creatively as you possibly can. Oh, nice. Bee's going to dig out some cross stitch. Excellent. Definitely room for that. Okay, so what do I have on my desk today? I am... <laughs> You know what? I've been <laughs> excited about tinfoil. That's the only that's the only way I can describe it. Excited about tinfoil. That's a strange way of explaining it. But um, I think I've been really I've been wanting to uh, work with copper tooling and things like that. I don't have any of that at hand, so I was trying to think of what I do have on hand, and that's kitchen foil. So I might be playing with kitchen foil today, doing some different creative stuff with that, experimenting if I you know how I can create those uh, the the tin, the tin foil uh, tooling effects on kitchen, you know, kitchen foil. I'm also going to be experimenting with tissue paper printing. This is something I found really comforting just to create. I've taken all that tissue paper, you know, all the things that 
stuff comes wrapped in when it's delivered to you or perhaps in gifts that we've received. And I just spent some time over the weekend making shapes and doing prints with the jelly plate on the tissue paper. I'm also, like you don't need a jelly plate to do this. You can trace stuff. You can take a Sharpie and make patterns on it. Uh, but what I'm liking about this is the sort of a transparent overlay effect you can get when you layer those papers over one another. So I'm going to play with tin foil and tissue paper. That's what I'm going to do today, folks. Now let's see if we can create some surprises because I think that's one way we can make an intentionally build in room for spontaneity. Perhaps is not planning things too much, but just diving into something with intention and being excited about the process of discovery, even if that process of discovery involves making some mistakes. That's one way that we can create room for beautiful spontaneity in our lives by just having fun and playing like we used to do when we were kids. And Timothy is saying, my magical world is everyone being so nice. Ah, because I think I can say it for others too. Oh, well, this is just, I don't know what I'm going to do here. How do I take a compliment, folks? You know, I'm not good at accepting compliments. Um, Oh, Tim says uh, that, well, I'm awesome. Oh, when he says I mean so much to a lot of people. Oh, Tim, I remember when I was in the shelter, you were with me 100% and that made me feel wanted. And that's uh, what I love is feeling wanted. And Tim, I think you're not alone in that. I think that's a very human thing. We all, it's important for us all to feel wanted. Yeah. Oh, Nicole, Nicole with the calendar of special events. Happy Random Acts of Kindness Day, everyone. That's beautiful. And thank you for the like, for the acts of kindness that folks like Tim are showing me. That's, that's lovely. And if I may, this isn't a deflection, I promise. Not a deflection. But I think it's important to be reminded sometimes that... That feeling of being special when we feel someone else shining it upon us or showing it to us in some way. Oftentimes it's because of something that you're doing as well that makes that possible, right? So it's that sort of what I was saying about spontaneity. When we make space for things in our lives, when we allow things to come into our lives, that takes a lot of work sometimes. It doesn't, it doesn't happen as, I don't know, as accidentally as we might like to think it does. So you might or may not be aware of it, but you have done something to enable that kind of that kind of goodness to come into your life. You've made space for it. You've allowed it. And thank you for doing that. All right. Uh, yes, so many people out there I would like to see in person. So many folks. I'm just going to cut up some tin foil and play with this here and smooth it out. I'm just going to use my fingernails to smooth it out. Nothing fancy. Hmm. And that's another good question too. If perhaps beauty is kindness in its own way or kindness is beauty. Oh, let's see. And the Tiffany's saying, would you ever think of doing a Zoom chat where we can all... <laughs> We can all do our art and chat like old times. Yes, and in fact, we are building in more of that kind of workshop into our, I like to call it programming. It's not, you know, it's just what we do, isn't it? It's just art hive stuff. Um, but we are creating more of those. So for example, uh, not all of them will be with me, but there are other wonderful familiar faces that are popping up there too. And some new faces with our fabulous placement students that we have on um, on our team these days. So that would be, look for those coming your way soon with um, Marta, Maddie, and Danielle, some excellent placement students. But every Tuesday night, there's a wellness art group with Kat V and Caitlin. So folks might remember Kat V and Caitlin from the studio. They were some coordinators that we had with us. Um, super awesome human beings. And every Tuesday night, they're hosting a Zoom. It's just an hour where you can come and hang out, make things. Usually there's a theme that you can make along with. And it's an opportunity just to chat and um, connect, create and foster more goodness in your own life, right? <laughs> Ooh, and Shelly's saying, let's see, 
Uh, let's see. Shelly says, uh, sorting out new craft area up. Lots of organizing craft supplies. Lovely. And Shelly's saying, uh, <laughs> afraid to craft because you can't afford to get more supplies. Well, oh my goodness. I've experienced that before as well. Um, perhaps there, that's where stuff like this comes in hand. I know I've said it before and I know you make really good use of all the materials at hand, but when in doubt, what non-traditional art supplies do you have lying around that you can make stuff with? I wasn't anticipating working with tin foil today. That's true too. And Tim says it would be cool to do a Zoom chat to show art. Ah, interesting, interesting, interesting. And uh, Shelly's saying, I haven't done any new programs yet because you weren't home, but now you will check them out. Oh, I do invite you to check them out. So the one we have in place already every Tuesday night at seven, like from seven to 8 p.m. Lovely folks working on that. And every Thursday night, of course, we have new guests that come in to host similar things to this live stream. So uh, we have some regulars. So B, who's on the stream here, does the first Thursday of every month. Christine Weatherly, who you might remember from the studio as well, does the second Thursday of every month. And then the third and fourth when, uh, Thursdays, rather, we have someone new from the community who steps in to share something awesome. Tonight, tonight we have Sophia uh, Campbell Johnson, who's coming in as a guest to work on um, vision boards. So Sophia used to come into the studio at least once a year and host a free uh, vision board workshop for folks. And it was always wonderful to have her in the space. We couldn't do that this year or last year. So tonight, uh, Sophia is going to be hosting the Art Jam at 7 p.m. on Facebook. No, it's not tonight. Tonight's Wednesday. Mary Kronert. What's going on with you? Um, every Thursday, so tomorrow, which is Thursday, Sophia will be hosting a vision board workshop, kind of a like a Zoom where you can join in. She'll sort of guide you in the process. You can ask questions. You can share your own work with her if you like. What do I want here? Yeah. And Annie's been saying, have been seeing people paint with coffee and tea. That is something I want to try as well. Like speaking of making art with unusual or non-traditional supplies. You know what I'm looking for, folks? I'm looking for a glue stick for my hot glue gun. There's usually a dozen hot glue sticks just lying around on my desk, except for today. Yep. And <laughs> B is saying, hey, I was convinced today was Tuesday, so I totally get thinking tonight was Thursday. And you know, that's, I think, what I mean by having a Wednesday kind of day. I'm not sure which side of the week I'm on. It's one of those weird things, just lost in time a little bit. But today is definitely Wednesday. Tomorrow is definitely Thursday. And there's still lots of loveliness coming up in the week for everyone. All right, I'm going to duck out of frame for just a little bit here so I can find a glue stick. You might hear me uh, digging through my heap of supplies. Okay, all right. Where are you, glue stick? Where are you? Oh my goodness, I have everything down here except glue stick. Come on. All right. Let's pull up my stash here. Let's see. I've got papers, I've got shaving cream, I've got pens, I've got tins. Nope. Not in there, folks. <laughs> All right, what about in here? There are benefits to having a tidy, creative space. For all you folks out there who are organizing, I honor that. I think I need to have a good organization of my space. And Tiffany saying, oh, interesting. I got to start a new journal on my birthday, February 1st. Happy birthday, Tiffany. Wow, and your dad started journaling daily. Wowzers, that's... Now, is your dad a regular journaler? I want to say that's amazing. I feel like that's definitely something to be honored. Uh, there's so many positive, oh, so many beautiful things that come from journaling, especially a daily journal. It's amazing that like the, just what can happen when you start taking, when you begin taking time to document where you're at, 
to just make space to scribble down thoughts, ideas, emotions, whatever it might be, even in the simplest forms of saying just what you did in a certain day, curating, you know, you can look back on that and it'll help lock you into certain moments that you think you may not need or want to remember at the time, but in the future, it's always interesting to revisit things, isn't it? And <laughs> Nicole saying, coloring rainbow buildings. Is that what you're working on today, Nicole? That sounds, that, like, that sounds really, that sounds awesome as well. B saying, I wouldn't know what a tidy creative space looks like. Mine generally looks like space, <laughs> like space gremlins went rummaging through everything. I, your, those space gremlins might have visited my studio as well. We'll have to work on something like maybe some signage to help, you know, keep them a little more tidy. And uh, Tim saying, I'm going to start when Tiffany gets my new journal. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. The journaling process can be so rewarding and healing. Uh, it can also just be a nice way of wrapping up your day or starting your day. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to reach out a frame to grab some other things. I'll be right back in a moment. Oh, Brandon. <laughs> Welcome, Brandon, saying tidy is nice, but creating always seems to make a mess. Yes, at least in my life. We'll see. <laughs> and Annie, thanks for all the support here. Annie saying also blame the gremlins. I do. Yep. All right, be back in a moment. Another dive. Come here. Come here. <sighs> I'm back. I'm back, everybody. I couldn't find that. I couldn't find glue sticks, so I'm going to improvise. I will unplug my glue gun, though. One more moment, folks. Thank you. All right. Much better now. <laughs> Essentially, I wanted to get some texture behind this tin foil because I've found in the past that it's just a little too thin. Perhaps if you got a heavier duty aluminum foil, kitchen foil, it would be easier to uh, emboss, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do instead is layer in some texture underneath to kind of fold the foil around, if that makes sense. So let's see, I go my go-to shape as always, a heart. I just need a slightly longer pipe cleaner. All right, well then. Looks like a little twisting will be the thing. Yeah, how many other folks out there are journaling right now? Not right now necessarily, like not exactly right now. But if you are, what are some of the benefits that you find? What helps make it a worthy practice for you? <laughs> Brandon's suggesting a new segment. What can Mary find in her pile of stuff? Brandon, you're not so far off. There are, um, I think I might have shown it very early on when we were moving offices and things like that, moving spaces. Um, every day when I was at the living room, uh, throughout the day, just in tidying up as things went, I inevitably would pick up things off of tables, like little bits and pieces that had been left behind, scraps, and I'd put, put them in my pockets. Now, at the end of the day, when I came home, I had pockets full of the most random artsy bits and pieces you can imagine. Sometimes, I didn't even know where they, I had no memory of where they were from or what, the, you know, what use they had in the studio world. So definitely, that's definitely a possibility. I have several jars around here. So I, I, what I started doing was taking stuff out of my pockets and putting it into these jars. So I have these big jars of random bits and pieces. And oftentimes I've thought that could be a thing where I just go through the jar and show folks what I have brought home every single day of the year. It could be its own installation, its own creative installation. Who knows, maybe I could get a grant for it. <laughs> and Shelly's saying, I usually drink Coke while I craft, but I haven't had it since January. Ooh, now it's a soda stream instead. That's, that sounds like fun. How are you finding that soda stream? I know sometimes it can be a little healthier if you can control what kind of what goes into your beverages. That's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. And it makes you feel like you have your very own 
soda shop in your in your home. I'm using a paintbrush to emboss this just because I don't want to break the foil, but we'll see how it goes. We'll try this technique out. And Nicole saying, I've been playing Animal Crossing. Mm. And I can't help but admire the creativity of the talented programmers and the amazing graphics. Absolutely right, Nicole. I think sometimes we create these strange um, walls. We tend to silo the different forms of art and creativity and digital art and game design. Often get a strange, for some reason, we, like in the fine arts world anyways, we don't necessarily consider it art. We don't talk about game design uh, in the same way that we do other kinds of creative uh, self-expression. And they are absolutely, they're astonishing, astonishing what, what can be done, what can be created in, through games these days. Um, and not just the visual elements, but also the performative elements. Performance capture, motion capture, the sound design of these worlds. I haven't played Animal Crossing yet, but you're absolutely right. This it's an art form, and I think I think the folks who created it would love to know that you're appreciating what they do. Reach out, send them a fan letter. Why not? Tiffany saying my dad ah oh, likes the, uh, liked that Tiffany journaled, but it wasn't his thing. But I showed him a video of different kinds of journaling that was more like coaching yourself, and I guess he liked that idea and and he's been doing it every day since. That's amazing, Tiffany. Yeah, there's not just one way to journal. There are so many different ways. So many different ways. And some of it is, yeah, there's there's different ways of kind of managing things as well. I mean, you could think that like a to-do list that you do every day is a type of journal. If you kept all those to-do lists or menu planning. I've been holding on to all the weekly menu planning that we've been doing since this strange time began. It's been really interesting to look back and over the document I've created about the kinds of things, the kinds of foods I've been eating, the kinds of planning that I've done for myself during this time. It all counts. Journaling is so much more than I think what it often, uh, like we often think of it, I guess, as just writing long form writing, but it can be so much more than that. And we haven't even gotten to art journals yet, but uh, Shelly bringing it in. Um, Shelly art journals and it helps, yep, it helps get the things out that are bothering you. Absolutely. All right. So now that I have that there, that's interesting. I wonder if I can work on that a little bit more, just a little bit more to get some shape into it. And Brandon finds a garden journal useful. So I love this. I love the sound of this. Brandon, can you tell us a little bit more about what a garden journal looks like? The kind of things, and I know every garden journal might be different, but I would love to learn, you know, what perhaps goes into that process for you. Because I think sometimes we get scared of journaling as well because it begins to feel like homework to us. Like if we don't, if we don't do it every day or if we skip uh, more than a day, we can be really hard on ourselves sometimes. And I think a large part of, well, what I'll call, for the purpose of this conversation, successful journaling, is just having a relationship with yourself where it's okay. You use it as a tool, not you know, and the, the journal doesn't dominate your life. <laughs> There's too many things, so many things in this world that we can feel bad about. Making art or expressing ourselves creatively doesn't have to be one of those things. Being kind to ourselves along that journey is so important. And Annie's saying again, yep, journaling helps me get to know myself, to observe, teach, heal, and make choices. Lots of identity stuff and lots of prayer and contemplation. Yes, and art. Excellent. Yeah, this sense of journaling as meditation, journaling as um, a form of communication to something other, like something either inside yourself that you haven't had time to connect with, or perhaps, uh, yeah, the, the creator, something beyond ourselves that 
is larger than ourselves. Something to help give us perspective and connect with the outside world. I'm loving this conversation. And Brandon says, I have the same issues with construction stuff, like nails and screws in my pocket when I get home. Just revisiting the conversation about bringing things home. <laughs> yep. It's, yep, some, yep, just stuff. And I have no idea where it comes from. No idea. But I imagine sometimes with the nails and the screws and things like that, it might get a little uh, painful. <laughs> there, I, I did quite a few times put sewing needles or like seam rippers into my pocket and forget that they were there. And yeah, that's, that's an unpleasant surprise at the end of the day. Don't do it folks, safety first. And Carlos, hello Carlos, welcome. Uh, Nicole saying, I soldered a plastic sword at the studio once and found one. Yeah, see, random stuff. And we still have so much of that random stuff in our storage locker. Don't worry, it's not gone, it's still there. And when we have an opportunity to bring out the workshop kits and get those on the road, we will. That's one thing we're looking forward to once we have that mobile studio up and running. And Carlos saying, howdy y'all. Hope you're all having a safe and good day. This art piece is looking really cool, Mary. Well, thank you, Carlos. Thank you very much. What are you working on? I know you've been doing some extraordinary digital art recently. Speaking of digital art, an underappreciated art form. And Shelley loving the soda stream. Yeah. Whoa! So the soda stream is, it sounds like it is a healthy choice for you. Her folks used to, like Shelly, drink two liters of, um, or two bottle, two liter bottles of Coke a day. Yeah, that's a lot. It can make a huge difference to control what, you know, goes into your body in that way. Yeah. Oh, and excellent. So Brandon coming back to the garden journal. Garden journals are great for planning, layout, what went right, what went wrong. Okay, so it sounds like you use it, a garden journal for you is, it almost sounds like a reflection, like looking back over the garden that has passed and into the future with the garden that is to come. This is a good time of year to do that, folks. An excellent time of year to do that. What am I going to do here? Hmm. All right, let's try this. I know I've started to get excited about the garden that is to come. I don't know if anyone else out there is. It's a good time of year to begin daydreaming about that. I'm really having a hard time not planting seeds right now. I know it might be a little too early, but I just can't help it. I just can't help it. Does anyone else out there make a garden journal? I think it's very similar in a lot of ways to perhaps a sketchbook and just someone who holds on to their sketches. And that's, that's another kind of journal as well, isn't it? A way of holding on and documenting what we create, the different processes that are behind it. Let's see, Nicole's been learning Oh, learning how to play cribbage. Well, on to the other things, the exciting things that we're making space for during this, these strange and interesting times. Can't go wrong with board games. I know cribbage isn't exactly a board game. There might be folks out there who, who don't appreciate me calling it that. But a game nonetheless. Play is such an important part of self-care. Letting ourselves play, letting ourselves just let things out in a kind of constructive way, but without any goal in mind, without any destination directly in our, our sight. Again, how one of the ways we can make space for spontaneity, for discovery in a very practical way. The artist we were interviewing yesterday for the live stream, which folks can still go back and listen to on Instagram, by the way, Prin Marshall, a UK based artist who's just awesome. And anyone who listened to the interview would know that. Um, she has started her, it's almost, she has a, what I would kind of describe as one way of looking at an art journal, but a sort of documentation of her creative process, layering 
sketches upon sketches of her work so that the designs start on one page of a transparent paper and then build up over time and she's incorporating all the elements from underneath but I imagine if you could unpack those pages and look through it becomes a flip book of process and I, th I think about journaling in the same way that it's documenting our process of humaning right whatever kind of journal you may keep it's it's taking it's making a meaning of our history of our process of where we've been where we're going similar to the garden really because we're all growing and changing and Tiffany's saying, my dad and I are planning to start a YouTube podcast as soon as he moves closer to you, which he's planning to do really soon. And we already have a name for it. Well, Tiffany, you got to tell us the name for it now. You got to. You can't leave us hanging. Or unless you want to save and wait, wait and like have a reveal on a future, a future live stream. That's pretty exciting. And Joe saying, hello, Joe. Joe's, oh, thanks for keeping us all focused on positivity. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I do that, Joe. I think you are one of the most positive people I know, if I'm honest. I think speaking of stumbling into things, if I am able to do that, I think sometimes it's because I stumble in. I stumble into that positive territory without necessarily meaning to. Yeah, let's try that. Here I go, folks. Not exactly sure of what I'm doing, but I'm just going to try it. I'm going to, yeah, you know what? I am going to do this. What if? The magic what if. What happens if I try to glue this down? We're going to find out. I think the positivity thing is just sometimes being able to recognize the wonderful weirdness of this world. <laughs> there are some things that are beyond our control. So I suppose what's the adage we do what we have control over is how we how we try to engage with it how we respond it's not always easy and you don't always have to respond positively goodness knows there are so many things out there that we need to kind of feel feel in whatever way we need to feel it but if there is an opportunity to respond in a way that's more positive for ourselves just for the sake of ourselves if we can do that, that's a beautiful thing, right? And then we remind ourselves that we can, we can sort of choose what we focus on. All right. Where am I going with this piece, folks? I don't know. Let's see. And Bridget saying, yeah, I've accidentally found sewing supplies in my pocket, along with so much glitter after a day at the studio or working on art at home. Yeah. How does glitter find its way into our pockets? Especially, this is the question I think that haunts us all, haunts all creative people everywhere. How does glitter find its way onto our person when we've never, we've never engaged with glitter intentionally? Where does it come from? Where, where does it come from, folks? Haunting, haunting. And you know what, from an environmentally, like an environmental viewpoint, glitter, not so good, right? Not so good, although there are eco-friendly glitters out there now that I would love to explore and experiment with. And Joe, oh Joe, looking forward to sunflowers this year. Last year, last year you had sunflowers that were 15 feet tall. Whoa. That's beautiful. And Danielle, welcome. Hello, Danielle. Hi, nice to see ya. I was gonna say howdy, just like Carlos, but I couldn't quite make it my own. Ha. Hi, Danielle. That's my response to you. It's a Wednesday kind of greeting, if ever there was one. Yes, that's, and, Dan, and Brandon, if you're out there, because I love a good sunflower as well. How do you keep the squirrels away from your sunflowers? That's another question I'm excited to put out there to the community. I'd like to know. I'd really like to know. So I think there's a certain uh, squirrels. Just, I guess maybe that's all I need to say, squirrels. They got to my sunflowers. They got to all of my sunflowers except one last year. But I'm not going to give up, folks. I'm not going to give up. So, Joe, Brandon, if there's anyone else out there who has sunflower growing tips, I want to hear him. What keeps those squirrels? 
away from your sunflowers. And Joe saying, yes, cribbage is a board game. The board is in the shape of the number 29, a perfect score, great math skills game. Yes, 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 yes. I know. And that's why when I hear math, my brain, I mean, opinions are my own. Math is an art form as well, or a, a precise art form, I might say. But uh, yeah, it's very difficult for me to get into math. That's all I'm going to say. I'm, I don't, rec you know, I just, you to you folks. For all the people out there, all the artists who love math, all the John Mightons of the world, I applaud you. <laughs> and Tiffany says, me and my dad are a comedy... Oh, so this is the, sounds like the podcast, a, a comedy type of podcast for people. And I just found... I've just... Sorry, let me read this again. I've just ha had the funniest conversation. So, ah, so it sounds like you and your dad have this natural kind of comedic timing with one another. So a podcast you're saying would be cool to see what you come up with. Give it a go. And Prin, waving. Hello, Prin. Were you hearing all the, uh, what I was saying about you and your amazing work? And Prin saying hello to everybody. <laughs> yes, I do recommend, uh, if you missed it, check in again with, uh, like, give the Instagram artist chat a, a listen to, the one from yesterday. Um, just, like, what a privilege, what an honor and a privilege it's been to chat with all the fantastic creators we have, not only in our own community, but the global community as well. One of, I think, you know, I don't know if there are upsides to what we've all been going through, but having opportunities to connect with people and create with people that we wouldn't otherwise have opportunities to create or connect with, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And Shelley's saying, ooh, this sounds like some, a little bit of scary stuff had some close family who have COVID, have had COVID and or came near others with COVID. So now you're creating special, oh, how beautiful, Shelly, a special craft to help cheer up people who've been affected by COVID-19. That's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gesture. I, I think it's, it's very scary these days, isn't it? And I think for people who are impacted, there's also this now, sometimes you get sick and you just get sick, but I know there's still a lot of stigma around it for folks and it's scary. And I suppose you can feel awfully alone if you're going through something like that, not knowing who to tell, who to talk to. So Shelly, thank you for being there for those folks and creating for them. Thank you to everyone out there who's doing, you know, doing their best to make a difference for folks in their community to make, you know, to help remind folks that they're still a part of the community. They're still welcome. They're still important. Who they are and what they do, even if all they do is just being themselves, that matters. Oh, yes, and Carlos saying thanks for the kind words about the digital artsing uh, that Carlos has been doing. It's been fun trying new stuff out with it. Yesterday, Carlos took an actual pencil and paper and did some sketching that way too. It felt good to mix and match a bit. That's what we're talking about, like those interesting hand skills, keeping a balance between both. And this journaling sounds great. I'm currently exploring digital scrapbooking journaling at the moment. <gasps> Carlos, you are? Carlos, we got to talk. Maybe, okay, new ideas coming into my head. They might be fueled by the caffeine I'm consuming. But I am very excited about the possibility, as, as you said that, the possibility of creating a digital journal or scrapbook for the community here on Facebook, perhaps. <gasps> oh, something to think about. Keep me posted on that, please. Yes. And Carlos saying we are human. Well, we are. Yeah, we are human glitter magnets. It manifests through. <laughs> it manifests through interdimensional inter portals with our <laughs> within our pockets as it travels from the mystical world of Glittertopia. Spoiler. Cannot confirm as scientific fact yet. Keep on that work, Carlos. It's important work. <laughs> And let's see. Oh yeah, Carlos, we're going back to the sunflower thing. How do you keep squirrels away from sunflowers? Sounds like the start of a joke, but it's not. It's very serious. And I love squirrels, but if I don't find a way, I mean, I want to keep my relationship with the squirrels in my community positive. That's all I'm gonna say, right? Right? I want to find some way to dialogue with them, some creative dialogue to say, please stop. 
eating my sunflowers. Like I will give them other sunflowers. I will give them seeds. I will give them lots of things. I just want some beautiful sunflowers. <laughs> and uh, okay, the gremlins are back again. B saying, I think it's the space gremlins, the same ones that mess up B's art desk and supplies. <laughs> oh, Joe, that's a great tip. So back to saving sunflowers. Wrap an aluminum pie plate on the bottom around the stalk, I guess is what Joe's saying, and the noise irritates them. I'm going to try it. I am down for that kind of, absolutely, that, that kind of uh, intervention that doesn't hurt the squirrels, just annoys them just enough. I'm going to give that a go. Thank you. That might work for some of my other plants as well, like my squash and things like that. Nicole says, I've been reading a book series. Uh, that a show about a, a show you used to watch. The author had to write an intro explaining that it was written in the 80s, so there are no cell phones. <laughs> it's interesting to see how they had to change the show to adapt with new technology. Yeah, that's, isn't that interesting? There's so many people who may not, having to explain perhaps to my niece or nephews that, you know, once upon a time, these magical computers in our pockets didn't exist. That's, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I once did uh, a play, um, Unidentified Human Remains and the True Nature of Love by Brad Fraser, I believe. We did a 30th anniversary remount at Buddies and Bad Times in Toronto. And this was still about, maybe this was 20 years ago. So cell phones and that technology is, was only still very new. But the play takes place in the 80s. Uh, so it's, I don't know if anyone out there is familiar with that play. I think it takes place in the 80s anyways. Uh, but a large part of the play is it's a kind of horror play, a thriller about uh, a killer who's on the loose kind of story and how these, this group of friends protect themselves and support one another through it. And it's very dark. It's very, uh, it's a lot of things. It's a lot. But the remount of the play was quite puzzling for a lot of people just because of that exact thing. In a day and age where we have cell phones and we can call someone to warn them, or we can send a text to say, hey, watch out for the killer that's coming, the story completely changes. The a sense of the urgency and the tension goes away. So we had quite a challenge with, I guess, making that play relevant to the community again. Um, it's so interesting how technology impacts our lives in ways we don't always anticipate, huh? And Danielle saying, oh, yes, to Shelley, just again, that support for folks. And this is to everyone out there, I think, too, I'd like to extend whose family or friends or loved ones have been impacted by the virus. I think we spend a lot of time trying to keep ourselves positive, I suppose, in that place of reminding ourselves that it's okay, it's not going to be forever. And sometimes it's easy, or it becomes easier to overlook the folks who are being impacted. It's very real, and we still need to take care of ourselves. But again, to everyone out there who's doing their best to make a difference, thank you. And to everyone out there who's still doing their best to take care of themselves, thank you. Thank you for that. Perhaps it matters more than it ever has before now. We're coming close to there being such a positive change. Folks are getting vaccinated. We're learning more about it every single day, right? We just gotta hang in there. We gotta hang in there. And Joe's also suggesting, oh, I love it. This is Mary's personal gardening stream now. Cayenne pepper at the bottom of the stalk. And you have about six types of cayenne pepper or six types of sunflowers. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> I've tried that before. I've gone, um, I've, yeah, I've dumped a lot of cayenne pepper on my garden before. My squirrels must love seasoning. They just must, you know, I'm, but I will try it. I will keep on trying it. I will keep on trying it. I've also heard sometimes that like garlic helps, but we'll see. Oh, Brandon, they, okay, I am not alone. They, squirrels also destroyed Brandon's sunflowers. You could put a little cone on them, maybe. The fact that you're sharing with nature is a beautiful thing. Yes, I know. I, I, I try and look at it that way. I try and be positive. I try. 
but you know, as positive as I try to be, squirrels, squirrels. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think maybe the idea is similar to what Joe's doing. Maybe planting a lot, kind of planting as many as possible. So I know farmers do this sometimes too. They, they have certain parts of their crops that they know will be sacrificed to wildlife. Maybe that's the way to go. I'll just plant more of everything and see what happens. And Laura's saying, hello. Oh, hello. Uh, hello, Laura. Afternoon all. Forgot it was Wednesday and had groceries to get. That's okay. Groceries are important. Oh, and Tiffany's saying I can't share the podcast name yet because it's a name that would need explaining, which when the podcast is out, you would get the meaning, so you'll have to wait. Okay, we shall wait. We shall wait and look forward to learning more. No problem. I can do that. I'm a super patient person. But I'll be fine. I will be fine. <laughs> and Laura, welcome. Folks, I don't want to get anyone too excited. But it looks like we are going to be revisiting Laura's Instagram art uh, artist chat this coming Tuesday. So for, for like for folks who are watching the archived one, that will be February. Oh goodness. Yeah, no, not coming to me. But today is, is today the seventeenth. Is that where we're at right now? The seventeenth of February. Perhaps, yeah. So we're going to be. We tried to interview Laura a few weeks ago and we had some technical difficulties, but nope, we're not going to let that get to us. We are going to find a way to interview Laura and enjoy learning more about this fantastic maker in our community. And Brandon, yeah, shout out to Buddies in Bad Times Theatre. Such a beautiful place. I loved working there. It's always such a pleasure. For folks who, uh, it's a, I hope it's still there. Please tell me it's still there. Um, it's a wonderful, uh, theater in Toronto, the first kind of LGBTQ positive theater in the city. There were theater companies and artists, of course, before then, but one just such a, like a beautiful, positive, quirky space with the kind of space that you walk into, you can feel the history and the different characters who have walked through there over time. Not just the, the roles that actors or artists have portrayed or played, but also the human characters that make our community and made that community in particular so vibrant and fascinating and love, like just filled with love, love. And I don't know, I can't, I can't quite explain it. Once this pandemic is over, I think uh, there will be more, I will be appreciating more theater, more live performances again, definitely. And Joe's explaining what, how wonderful is this? So, oh yeah, so wrapping, so maybe making the aluminum foil wrap around the stock. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> and about my squirrels appreciating spice. Hello, Momo. Momo chiming in saying, maybe, maybe I have Mexican squirrels. It's very possible. It's very possible, right? They, it's, it's a diverse, diverse world out there. Uh, I'll need to find other ways of luring them then. I'll make maybe some distractions, some other spicy distractions. I'll do a test. Maybe get a squirrel cam, <laughs> a squirrel cam to capture, to learn more about these creatures in my yard, how they work, how they operate. Perhaps that's what it is. Do I need to think? Do I need to get in the mind of the squirrel to respond to, to the squirrel? Do I need to know them from the inside out? Oh, we'll see. And oh yes, Karen. Hello, Karen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Karen says I tried cayenne pepper solution on vegetables last summer, but it really hurt the raccoons. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. So again, there are solutions out there. It's finding the one that works for whatever situation you are working in. I don't know. The cayenne pepper solution, again, not always so good for every creature. We will overcome. This is a relatively small thing and we have a whole summer to figure it out. I think I'll start by just planting a million sunflowers and seeing, seeing how that goes. Yeah, a million sunflowers. And Tim's saying, and that looks cool. 
Let's see. Oh, this or, or something else that someone's working on. Let me know. I'm experimenting. I'm actually quite enjoying this piece as it's evolving. Yeah. And Joe saying, by the way, Mary, my new hobby, <laughs> your new hobby frustration uh, or obsession, or is the frustration exercise, getting the frustration out, is puzzles. So, so far, Joe thinks, <laughs> Joe thinks he's done 15 of them or, wow. Oh yeah, okay, but but so disappointed. The last a thousand piece puzzle, the pe the last piece of an a thousand piece puzzle was missing. Oh no, the a thousand puzzle piece. The... Let me start again. Today is a Wednesday kind of day. My language, my language skills are failing me. Um, so the last a thousand piece puzzle you worked on was missing six pieces, and Joe's convinced there's a conspiracy. Puzzle packager number two thirty two is auctioning them off on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, you let us know if you need to talk to someone, okay? Puzzling can be an intense pastime and it's okay to reach out and get some support if you need it. I don't want to see you getting yourself into trouble. Don't want to see you getting so, especially over a few puzzle pieces. We've all been there. We know what that feels like. I offer you a challenge, Joe. What happens? What would happen if you tried to um create the missing puzzle pieces. Just grab some markers and sharpies, trace the shapes out, and make your own puzzle pieces to complete that puzzle. That is a challenge I offer you. And Joe says, oh, how lovely. Lots of, he has lots of seeds for you. You have hundreds of sunflower seeds of different kinds. Oh, I'm in. I think our community, perhaps that's something we can offer one another. Maybe if you have enough that you'd like to share, maybe we can make little packets and distribute them throughout the community. That's lovely. Brandon, if you're still listening, if you'd be, uh, perhaps you might, the folks at Dig might be interested in helping out with that too. We can have a sunflower seed extravaganza. Okay. So Laura says, apparently today is the 17th. Good. Thank you for helping keeping me on track. Oh, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. So next Tuesday is the day where hopefully, knock on wood, interviewing Laura Brown. So keep an eye out for that, folks. It's going to happen. It will happen one way or another. If not on Instagram, then maybe we'll try something on Facebook. And Nicole's saying, I was listening to the audiobook of Animal Farm recently, and the narrator really put a lot of effort into it. He sang one of the songs. He did? Wow. Beasts of England in such a catchy way. I had it stuck in my head all day, says Nicole. The uh, audiobook recording is such an extraordinary thing. And those are probably most likely actors that are doing it. So shout out to all the actors doing voice performance work out there. Voice capture, voice performance. It's such an, like, an extraordinary job. It's everywhere. And we don't really take time to appreciate it because, I don't know, maybe we're not, you know, it doesn't carry the same celebrity as a lot of other kinds of performance do, I suppose. And Carlos saying, I think double check that squirrels are deterred by citrus smells, such as lemon rinds, etc., similar to kitty cats. So maybe citrus rinds around the base of the sunflower bed. I can do that. But uh, it may not be super pleasant for them to be around either, so it may be something to keep in mind if the garden is kitty sp a kitty space too. But Carlos is going to double check on that and get back to us. Fantastic. And I think we will have some gardening-themed kind of creative workshops coming up. I think... You'll probably see one of these Wednesdays. I'll probably do some seed starting. It'll probably happen much earlier than it should just because I'm so impatient. It's so hard not to start growing things. I just can't help it, right? And let's see, Tiffany's saying, if you need any help with your studio when it reopens, oh, I will definitely help you and hang out with you. Uh, oh, and you shared your video. And uh, I shared your video and what uh, you're making is cool. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much. It's going to look interesting. The next incarnation of the studio, um, it probably won't be a physical space like the space at 149 Simcoe Street for a while. We need to listen we need to you know, play that out, play that by ear. We will, however, have a mobile art studio, and that, we're hoping, will be a great balance between, you know, 
especially during these times when things are still uncertain. And we will definitely be looking for folks to come out and help us with that as soon as it's safe enough for people to gather in that way. But we're looking forward to doing things as soon as the weather is nice again, you know, getting out in parks, meeting people, holding workshops, uh, or like distributing workshop kits to people so that we can spread out and make art. Folks can also take them home if they need to. Looking for different ways of combining kind of the virtual elements with in-person elements as well. It will be interesting. It will be interesting. And we want, of course, to make the mobile studio. It's not just going to be a van. It's not just going to be, you know, no, no, no. It's, it's going to be its own work of art all on its own. We just need to get the cube van first. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see. Cutting grass. You'll do it. Tim, you're, this is awesome. You're just so, so super helpful. Be careful what you wish for. There might be other folks listening on the stream and they'll be thinking, hmm, I need help cutting my grass. And let's see. And so Tim's asking, what am I making? I'm just experimenting with tin foil and some tissue paper art prints that I made with jelly prints. So if you have a jelly plate, I know some folks are familiar with jelly plates. Just another way of mono printing. So mono printing is using a softer surface to apply paint on and remove paint from the surface and then applying your paper on to that painted surface and pulling the paint, the, the paper off and you get different designs um, created that way, different images emerge that way. And what I love about the tissue paper, as you can see, it's transparent. So kind of, let's see if I can get a little closer on this. So as you're layering up these different pieces, the transparency of the paper allows you to like for each layer to kind of shine through in its own unique way and you can build up texture and color over time. Yeah. And we're back to sunflowers again with Joe. So the big issue that Joe had with the tall sunflowers was nothing to support them in the middle of the yard. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, maybe I had a friend once. This is a beautiful thing. Um, without a lot of money, wanted to create something special for her family, for her daughter, and decided to create a castle, kind of a fairy castle in their yard, in the small yard space they had out of sunflowers. So they grew sunflowers in a circle. Um, and over time they would kind of, they created their own closure at the top, depending on where the sun was, I guess. And so this became a space, its own space that her daughter could go to and hang out like a sunflower fort, a special place that she could go. And I thought, what a beautiful idea. And I'm trying to remember how she supported it, perhaps with ropes and a few stakes. I know if you have a lot though, that's may not be the easy thing to do. And Brandon's saying, excellent, this is good news. I think Dig would love to partner on seed packets. All right, I'm, I'll get in touch, or maybe we can be in touch. We've been looking to partner on something like that for so long now. It's just a matter of timing sometimes, I know. And we're all so busy these days as well. <laughs> so we'll do the sort like, yeah, a seed packet idea would be kind of fun. Distribute them, share them with the community. <laughs> and Joe saying, I get to keep my squirrels, the seeds for my squirrels. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. The squirrels in our yard are very well cared for in spite of my, the battles I fight with them. Yes, watch out squirrels. This summer, things will be maybe different. Maybe, or maybe not. Maybe they'll just enjoy everything the way they always have. And that's okay too. Sophia, hello, Sophia. <laughs> Sophia Campbell Johnson, hello. So this Sophia is the wonderful person who's doing the vision board workshop or the vision board art jam tomorrow night, Thursday night on our Facebook page as a live stream. So welcome, Sophia. And oh yeah, the mobile studio project is going to be interesting. Oh. We're lucky we have um, some wonderful funding from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, enough to help us get started. Uh, it still needs a lot of work and a lot of development and we are still trying to find a used 10 foot cube van, similar to a U-Haul style 10 foot aluminum sided cube van that we can help um, we can convert into something really special for the community. We have some lovely folks who are gonna be helping us with that conversion process. 
It's just about finding that cube van, finding something that's uh, pre-loved, but not completely driven into the ground and something that will make a solid base to convert so that we will have it for years and years and years. And Nicole saying, yeah, it'll be the magic art studio instead of the magic school bus. Exactly. We want something that is bright and beautiful and whimsical that can, you know, where we can bring the studio to you, wherever you might be in the community. That might be, you know, to parks, it could be parking lots, it could be to schools or different organizations or community events that are happening. We want it to have a slightly festive air. You know, what, the, what would the living room be if it wasn't a little bit weird, a little bit festive? We need to have that element there, I think. Um, and we're not gonna settle until we've got it exactly right. Exactly right. But for folks out there, if you do have any <laughs> connections, if you know of any folks who maybe are retiring, they are used cube vans, uh, especially those 10 foot aluminum sided ones, please let us know. If you have a lead on that, send me a message. Happy to, happy to learn more, happy to ask. Um, and do a little legwork myself, obviously, but definitely, uh, as far as capital grants co are concerned, things like that have been made a little more difficult by the pandemic. But you know, we do what we can. We do what we can with what we have, just like all the other art hives do. And Joe saying it needs, if it needs reno, I'm in. Oh, excellent, Joe. But it will be love, not list. Love it, not list it. <laughs> I forget about those shows that they exist out there. <laughs> yeah, when I was, it reminds me of when we first started the living room project, just generally having like when I was explaining it to people. It's one of those things I think that until you, uh, until you experience it somehow, it's really hard to explain. And then and oftentimes, with the studio project itself, people, until they had a chance to come out and see it and experience it, it, you really don't know what it is. You really can't quite comprehend. And as soon as they do, of course, they're like, oh, I get it. This makes so much sense. Right now, how are we describing it? Kind of like a really uh, whimsical food truck, but instead of food, instead of selling food, we are sharing art and creative experiences with people. That's uh, one way of describing it. And creating space as well. I want the mobile art studio to be a placemaking machine. And of course, when the pandemic is over, how wonderful would that be? We can, there's so many exciting things we can do and experiences we can create with one another. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there. Yeah. A new way of engaging with people. And we owe it all to other projects that have come before us as well. So uh, there's a project in that emerged out of Los Angeles, the Barrio uh, Studio Project. Perhaps I'll put a link in the show and tell post. So these are things that have been done historically. We're not the first group to do this. We're definitely standing on the shoulders of other arts organizations that had to get creative because they didn't have money or they didn't have access to the same resources that other arts organizations, other fine arts organizations did. Because I think what happens a lot of times is that if you're not a fine arts organization, um, people don't necessarily value you as a creative resource in the community. Because I think we understand things like art galleries as being important to community. We understand other cultural things that are landmarks, that store things that are considered of value. Again, it's just that idea of what's valuable and reframing that and helping people understand that values, it's not always about money. It's about culture. It's about community. It's about recognizing the value and the resources we are to one another and everything that can be created through that. Yeah, so we're trying to educate people too. Oh, and Joe has a good, oh, good point. I should contact Cash for Cars. They do, they take in charity vehicles and then uh, repair them. You know what, I'm going to do that. I hadn't thought about that before. Thank you for that. Oh no, and now that song is in my head. Oh no, oh no, oh no. 
I will have to listen to something else to get to that earworm gone. And Laura says, more like a bookmobile. Yes, I never had a chance to experience bookmobiles. So I'm really looking forward to learning more, uh, just diving into that world as well. And let's see. Barb, hello, Barb. While you are waiting to plant your seeds, it's fun to decorate inexpensive plant pots with quotes like, oh, here we go. Barb always has something beautiful to contribute. A flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. Barb, another beautiful piece of wisdom shared with the community. How do you know exactly what to share? Such a beautiful thing. That is beautiful. I love that. And that's a way we can all thrive together. Yeah. Oh, goodness. And Austin's looking. Austin's on the case. Austin has found a cube van on Auto Trader months ago for under $5,000. I don't know if it is still available. You can check to see if it is. And I'll, oh, and you will too. Austin, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what? I think if all, like, if different folks have eyes on things, if you see anything, you let me know. It's always like every lead is worth investigating. And it is like, what an interesting world it is out there. Let's see what I can do here. Maybe I'll spend some time just doing a little illumination work, like a little embossing work on this to define it now that it's a little more secure. Yeah, we're a little bit fussy with what we're looking for, definitely. But I think it's worthwhile to be a little bit fussy because we want it, we want it to be special and we want it to work. I think buying something that's used, it's important to buy something that we won't have to continue repairing in a major way in the years as we move forward. We want this to be something that we hang on to for a while and it will allow us to go everywhere, not just Oshawa, but Durham region as well. And maybe beyond, maybe beyond, maybe down the road, we can get a Canada Council Arts Grant to go cross country and work with a different resident artist in every, every place we land with the studio. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, see, lots of dreams. Gilbert, hello, Gilbert. Oh, it's so good to see you, Gilbert. Gilbert saying, when is the mobile studio art hive, the mobile art hive happening? Good question. Well, the good news is that we have received a grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation that will help us uh, purchase a used cube van and begin the conversion process on it, at least uh, basically to get it on the road, to get it looking in the kind of shape we want it to look. Um, then we can continue adding bells and whistles as we move forward. But depending on what's out there, you know, some of that money may be directed to helping repair certain things on the cube van. You know, we, we have to be careful and we're, we're doing our best. When we applied for the grant, there were definitely a lot more of these cube vans out there, but they've become, they're just in demand. So again, that 10 foot aluminum sided cube van, very similar to what U-Haul has, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have rented a U-Haul van in your time, something that's uh, 10 foot lower to the ground. Yeah, there's so much possibility there. So we're still working on it. And I think um, there'll be some fundraising in the future to help us cover some of the little bits and pieces that we couldn't anticipate. But again, if other folks know, have a line on a lead in any organization or business who might be able to help us with that, uh, I would appreciate knowing about it, right? Many hands make light work. And as far as when, okay, fingers crossed, knock on wood, uh, I would love to have the vehicle ready for the summer. I would love to have the mobile art studio. And that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're working for, to have everything ready so that we can hit the road, literally, uh, hopefully by May or June, and be ready to go out to folks and connect with folks in person again. And at the very least, go into communities and drop off workshop kits and materials to folks if they need them. So that's what we're hoping for. So fingers crossed, um, eyes out there, ears, eyes peeled, ears to the ground, all the things, tentacles out, spidey senses alert, all the things, all the things are out there. All the hope is out there. This is something that's not just a magical idea anymore, not just a dream. It's actually possible because of the Trillium Foundation. So huge thank, thanks to them. And huge thanks to everyone who's asking questions. This might sound, maybe I should, uh, perhaps this is something I should have a town hall about, maybe. I call it a town hall. It would just be another live stream, but just about the mobile art studio project. Hmm. 
interesting. Interesting indeed. But I tell you, it's so great to know that so many folks are out there like wanting to have, like wanting to help this project happen. So many folks are invested in seeing this project become a reality. And it's just like we were saying at the beginning, to know we're not alone, right? To know that this is something that matters to a lot of people. It's not just, not just me, not just my board. This is something this idea has wheels. Oh gosh, sorry. It's got potential. It's got it's pos it's something that is exciting. It's something that can bring new life to the project in a new way. And help keep people connected and creative. So always interested to hear what people have to say and any ideas they have. Let's see if I can find a dark marker. We're approaching the 3.30 mark. This time went by so quickly. So quickly indeed. Again, always such a pleasure to live stream with you folks and stay connected. And Joe saying, Mary, one thing I've experienced, as other haves, I'm sure, um, I'm, is mind, oh, interesting, is the mind being scattered. But thanks to my incredible wife, Barb, she was able to keep me grounded with her meditation. She was able to teach me some things to assist me. Just wanted people to know there are so many types of art to help us. And that creative meditation is such a beautiful thing. Maybe, you know what, maybe we should connect with Barb and see if Barb would be able to share some of this with the community. I'm not sure. I think being able to spend time with yourself in meditation is such a powerful tool. I think there are a lot of folks out there, this interesting period of you know, so like isolating, keeping to ourselves. It's meant that we're spending a lot of time with our own thoughts, our own inners, inner workings, our inner going-ons. Meditation is definitely something that can assist with the interesting journey about how, how we make friends with ourselves, how we find peace within ourselves, how we can, you know, have those tools handy and nearby so that we can call that up within ourselves when we need it. And if that helped you, feel more grounded, Joe, if that helped bring you a kind of, sounds like a kind of clarity, a kind of grounding clarity. I would love to learn more about how we can share that with the community because you know what? I'm not all, you know, I'm not always grounded. I think we can safely say that. That's not necessarily one of my superpowers. But you know what? We'll see. We'll see about making that a possibility. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, and thank you, Joe. And you know what? Thanks for spending time with me today. Thanks for creating with me, everyone. Thank you for the lovely conversations about hope, about life and gardening and growth and all the wonderful things we have out there right now, but also the things we have waiting for us in the future. There's so much beauty out there. There's so much potential and it's, it's there. We can connect with it if we want to. Finding ways to connect with it, that's part of the work we need to do. But once we do have those things, it becomes so much easier. Hmm. The beginning of a piece. We'll see where this takes me. Experiments with tin foil and tissue paper printing. I like it. Happy accidents. Love it. And to everyone, again, thank you. I want you to remember how beautiful you are, how powerful you are, how extraordinarily beautiful human, like extraordinarily beautiful and human you are. All those things that make you so special. All those things that give your voice such power, such, ah, you-ness. That's the only way I can think about it. The you that you bring to the world. Thank you for taking care of that. Thank you for prior prioritizing your own wellness, even when it's difficult. Thanks for taking time for you 
today. And thanks for spending some time with me too. I appreciate this more than you folks will ever, ever know. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to wrap up. Oh, thank you folks for being here. Looking forward to all the wonderful things that are coming our way tomorrow, which is Thursday. <laughs> we'll start off the day on Facebook around 11 with an activity from Danielle, our comfort character check. So tune in to learn more about that and share the characters in your life from books, music, films, video games that are special, that you consider to be friends of yours, that characters you'd like to hold near and why we want them near us. And then tomorrow evening, of course, at 7 p.m., Sophia Campbell Johnson will be here uh, doing a lovely workshop Zoom on vision boards. So break out the collage materials and gather around to share some of her wisdom and benefit from her absolute just, ah, oh, what an amazing person Sophia is. So happy to have her with us today. And of course, Friday, we'll have sound check, a beautiful opportunity to share the music that motivates us, that brings us to life, creating our very own playlist for the weekend. That will be with Maddie. And then we'll see you back on Monday with Marta's activity once more. Everybody, thank you so much. And you know what, Carlos, this has been awesome. I'm thanking you folks for being here. Thank you for sharing space with me, sharing time with me. And <laughs> we'll see you again real soon. Keep taking care of yourself. Keep appreciating every little thing you do that helps make, helps move your day forward, but also just helps you be here, be present in your own life. It is an absolute honor to create with you. All right, that's enough for me today. So what, what do I say? Until we can connect and create with one another in person again, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. Is that what I say? I think so. Yeah. See you again soon, folks, and enjoy the rest of your day wherever you might be. You matter. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>